Remote sensing projects often start with the question, should we use aerial or satellite imagery? Even after the project has started, this question will be asked again as the ability to collect imagery, the reliability of the data, or the scope of the work changes. Budgets, technology, and government restrictions can change often without notice. What's good today may not work tomorrow. It happens that satellite and aerial imagery are pitted against each other. These two collection methods are not competitive. A combination of both collection methods can support different aspects of your project. This is especially true in large-scale and long-term scenarios. Today, we will explore seven factors that you should consider when deciding if aerial or satellite imagery is right for you. We'll shed some light on the key differences and ask if one might better suit your specific needs or if they can be made to work together for the best results. Number one, efficiency. While the prices of both aerial and satellite imagery vary widely across providers, satellites can typically complete larger remote sensing projects more economically than an aircraft. Satellites can capture huge areas without restrictions, all in a single pass. Often manned or unmanned aircraft will require multiple coordinated flights. This can have enormous impacts on your cost-benefit analysis. These savings are vital in budget or time-sensitive government projects, or when considering taking a new solution to market. Number two, scalability. Both satellite and aerial imagery are well suited for small or large scale collections. The key difference is the speed and ease with which satellites can collect thousands of square kilometers in minutes without the complicated logistics of aircraft flight planning. For example, the Worldview 3 satellite can collect over 7,000 square kilometers in a single pass. That's an image 66 kilometers wide stretching all the way from the Italian cities of Milan to Genoa, in the time it takes a barista to make your espresso. Number three, land and air restrictions. Borders and airspace regulations are complicated. Aircraft operators must obtain permits, plan takeoff and landing points, and deal with changing border and travel restrictions. Satellites simply don't have any of these issues, they can collect isolated, conflicted, or cross-border locations with ease. Number four, tailored collection tasking. Whether you order aerial or satellite imagery, many providers offer fully customizable planning. This means you can prioritize areas, select the resolution and available sensors, and even specify the collection angles. European space imaging has some added benefits such as flexibility to adjust these parameters shortly before the collection and real-time weather monitoring to ensure that images are as cloud-free as possible. Number five, multispectral and stereo imagery. Both aerial and satellite providers can offer multispectral imagery or stereo. However, there are some key differences in the capabilities of various providers. Some companies might only offer four or eight multispectral bands, or they might need multiple specialized aircraft, each fitted with different sensors. The stereo imagery might only be from two vantage points and collected at different times. The Worldview satellite constellation can capture 16 different spectral bands, including shortwave infrared. It can also collect tri-stereo imagery in a single pass, meaning three distinct vantage points for constructing incredibly detailed 3D models. Number six, spatial resolution. Resolution might be the most commonly cited difference between images captured from aircraft or satellite. To tell us more about spatial resolution and why it matters, let's talk to Maria from European Space Imaging. Hi, everyone. The spatial resolution of an image from either an aircraft or a satellite refers to the physical dimension of a pixel. So basically, how much of the ground is defined in a single pixel of an image. As with any photo, the better the resolution, the more clarity and visible objects. 
Resolution is a product of multiple factors, including the actual sensor capturing the image, but also the altitude from which the image is collected. This would seem as if aircraft had a strong advantage here. They can fly lower and lower in order to achieve resolutions of one centimeter, in theory, even less. But this comes at a cost. The lower you fly, the less of the ground you see, therefore requiring more flight time to fully capture the area. It is rare that aerial imagery is ever captured at these resolutions, unless it's a very small space using drones. Plus, do you really need one centimeter resolution imagery? It is true that not many satellite imagery providers can offer resolutions that compare to aerial imagery. In fact, at the time of filming this video, there is only one constellation with that capability. The Worldview constellation with true 30 cm resolution. 30 cm resolution allows the user to identify key features in most applications road lines, light posts, roof features, as well as individual plants and larger animals are all visible. Also, new technologies like Maxar 15 cm HD imagery offered by European Space Imaging further narrow the competitive gap between aerial and satellite imagery. If you want to see how very high resolution satellite imagery can work for your project, then feel free to reach out to us at European Space Imaging at any time. Thanks, Maria. This brings us finally to number seven, persistent focus. The ability to monitor a single location every week, every day, or even multiple times per day is crucial for some remote sensing users. Many providers of both imagery types can offer plans to meet these requirements. Some factors such as location and capacity might make it difficult or impossible for a single data source. While aircraft can fly under the clouds to capture clear imagery, they will have difficulty making frequent visits over remote areas without incurring high costs. Conflict zones and regional regulations might also prohibit flying. Conversely, satellite collection plans can be programmed to focus on a single area of interest anywhere in the world and capture imagery at frequent intervals, even multiple times per day. However, in cloudy regions, the weather may play a role in the ability to collect. Persistent monitoring of a single location is just one example of how satellite and aerial images can work together to achieve the best results. So, whilst aerial and satellite imagery might offer several distinct advantages over each other, I hope it's clear now what to consider when searching for imagery and how both collection methods can complement each other. Very high resolution satellite and aerial imagery can enhance a variety of applications, improve decision-making, and make operations more efficient. Thanks, and see you next time.